Welcome to a new part of the ISM Statistics 1 exercise set. This time with an exercise on measures of dispersion. Let's take a closer look at the exercise. The sales of a jeweler today have been as follows. What's to do with this data set? First off, calculate the range, calculate the interquartile range, the corrected variance, and finally the corrected standard deviation. Okay. However, before we start with this, we first take the data set and order this in an ascending fashion. We'll see why we do this in a later moment. So here, if we order this, we start with the smallest, that's the 70, and then work our way upwards in ever increasing order. Always, if we copy one value into the new data set, we just erase this from the old one to assure that every value is considered only once. So here we get in this way our ordered data set. The advantage of this ordered data set we will see directly if we start with the first part of our exercise because in the first part we are asked to calculate the range. The range in this context is defined as the difference between the maximum and the minimum. Well, maximum in this is the largest value, minimum the smallest value. As we ordered this in ascending fashion, maximum is the last value, minimum is the first value. So we can just by taking a look at our data set directly get maximum minimum and therefore the range of 1430. One additional thought on the range. If ever you heard about box plots, the range, which we just calculated, describes the size of the whole box plot, so from upper whisker to lower whisker. This in mind, we can go to a second part, we go to a second part of our exercise, calculating the interquartile range. Here, as a note, linking to the aforementioned comment on the range, Whereas the range is the size of the whole box plot, the interquartile range is the size of the box of the box plot, so the height of the box. Okay, how do we get the interquartile range? We need the third and the first quartile, or in other words, the 75 percentile and the 25 percentile. How to calculate them? Well, we multiply the respective percentages with the number of observations in our data set and then round this up to the next highest integer. And this gives us the position in the data set where we can find the respective percentile or um, quartile. Here in this case, in the first, we multiply 0 0.75 with 10 and 0 0.25 with 10 giving us 7.5 uh, and 2.5. If we round this up to the next integer, we get 8 and 3. So positions 8 and 3 con say, uh, contain our third and first quartile. So here we find at the respective positions values 600 and 300. So our interquartile range is 300. Having thus concluded the first two parts of this exercise, we can carry on with getting the corrected variance. However, before we start with calculating the corrected variance, first off, we need to get the arithmetic mean. This, however, is just an easy exercise because, well, we just add up all the different values in the data set and divide this by the number of observations, giving us here an arithmetic mean of 512. We can then use this arithmetic mean in this formula for the corrected variance. Might look complex at first glance, however it isn't, because what we basically do is we take all the data points, square them, add them up, and then we just divide them by the number of observations minus one, and from all of this we subtract the squared mean of or the squared arithmetic mean, which is also slightly changed by multiplying it with number of observations by number of observations minus one. So here in the end we get, if we insert our values, 
all the values we had of the data set in squared form summed up. In the end it's divided by 9 because 9 it's we have 10 observations so 10 minus 1 gives 9. Then minus 10 by 9 that's the correction factor times the arithmetic mean to the power of 2. And if we enter the whole expression into our calculator this will result in a value of 153,995.5556. This is our corrected variance. Having gotten the corrected variance, part D, the corrected standard deviation, is relatively easy. We just consider the corrected variance from part C and take the square root. The square root of this value gives us here a standard deviation corrected standard deviation of 392.4227. This then directly concludes this part and this exercise. And I hope all of you enjoyed listening to this exercise and learned at least some of something from it. Until next time, see you and goodbye.